Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another wonderful rendition of the Midweek Report. I am way too overpowering for, like, just a immediate stream. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome to... <laughs> Can you imagine just... me as, like, a talk show late-night host? <laughs> Actually, I think that would be a very good job for me. Just, <laughs> just go, 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 go into a talk show with the, like, the high energy of, like, one of those high-energy YouTubers. It's like, hello, everybody. I honestly... Full, full high energy. A game show or some shit. They should put me on, like, a game show. Not Family Feud. F Family Feud. <laughs> Not Anything but that. <laughs> Anything but Family Feud. The old people watching. Yes. But... Who is this freaking young kid? Yeah. Boomers in the background watching. They were like, what is this? <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> Why uh... is he here? He lost. He lost. He lost. Oh my gosh. But yes. So, hello. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> so, today, Things what do we have? Not having an opening. But yes, today we'll be covering Cyberpunk news. It's been a while since we've covered Cyberpunk news, and immediately anyone who watches regular are going to be like, oh god, this again. Okay, let me be full disclosure. <laughs> Number one, I actually really enjoy this game. Still enjoy this game. And while the hate is kind of justified, I think a lot of it could also be a little overblown. Don't get me wrong, it was a buggy mess. I'm not going to disgruntle any of that. <laughs> but uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here, so... First thing on the docket before I cover anything of that. We'll get into the defensive bit later. I feel bad saying that because it's like, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, so yes, today we'll be covering Cyberpunk. Specifically Cyberpunk, like, we haven't had news for this in a while, but recently CD Projekt Red dropped a trailer, or presentation I should say, for a brand new story DLC called Phantom Liberty. And it's a teaser, so it's not a full-blown trailer. Yet. But, again, it's something. The long-awaited DLC has finally come, or the full-on story DLC. Now, from what I hear, there's a little bit of con there's a little bit of debate as of right now whether it'll be paid or not. We don't know. That I can't speak to, one way or the other. Maybe it will be paid, maybe it won't be. But it looks really interesting. I imagine it'll probably, from the looks of it, it'll... Judging by the main character taking a literal political oath in the background, as well as the whole concept of phantom liberty and whatnot, I imagine it'll be some level of political intrigue will be sucked into. In the game, there's kind of that in some missions where you kind of, depending on some story missions you do, or submissions, I mean, you kind of get brought into the political aspect of the game where you end up doing jobs for politicians, but that's kind of as far as it goes. You know, well done. maybe a little bit of criminal investigation here, a bit of election fixing there. Well, not election fixing, but beside the point. You know, scavenging. <laughs> scavenging. But yeah, working for high-up politicians here, criminal investigation there, but you don't ever really get into the political intrigue of this game. Like, it's an overflowing concept, but you don't really get into it. You're more too busy dealing with the corporations to worry about whatever's left of the government and whatever they're doing. But yeah, this might be very much an exploration of that concept of the game, and I'm really interested to see where that goes, honestly. Like I said, it's just a teaser about 51 seconds long, I think. So, we don't get really much of it. But you get some. I, but we get something. And that is not all, though. There is so much more to talk about. It is actually part of a full presentation brought to you by GameSpot, who did a piece underneath, though I think it was one of their Nightwire streams that I didn't catch, but I was I was able to get the full presentation by GameSpot, so it shows you that. And it talks about a lot of stuff that they're planning to do for Cyberpunk in the future. After going quiet for a while, they finally come out officially politically, or not publicly, politically, publicly, and have announced what they're planning to do with the game going forward. Number one, they've said that every update from now on is going to mostly focus on all the big updates, I should probably say, are going to focus on next-gen consoles and PC and stuff like that. So previous-gen is, you know, they said they're going to do some maintenance updates to keep the thing running, but most of the new big and new features and whatnot they might add into the game are going to be next-gen. Probably a good idea, considering if they want to do something bigger and more bombastic, it's going to have to be on next-gen. Yeah. That's the problem when it comes to consoles, you're kind of hampered with the lowest denominator you're working with. Yeah. Well done. So their, cho their choice to start moving towards more 
current gen consoles and not you know the like last gen consoles means that there's a good chance there's probably more dlc coming or stuff like that and it just requires that more bombastic technical efforts means that it'll have to be on modern gen consoles plus they might also start really polishing up the modern gen and stuff like that but not that it isn't really polished as it's hmm also, they introduced the concept of edge runners. Now, circling around, those who remember back in Cyberpunk's early days, remember that they were doing a lot of cross promotion stuff like that. They were getting a lot of big names in. For example, Keanu Reeves. Who, fun fact: actually comes back in a little bit of a teaser near the end of the product, near the end of the presentation, to actually hype up the new um, Phantom Liberty thing because he'll be coming back as Johnny Silverhand. Because for those who don't know, spoiler alert: he's kind of in your head, so it's kind of hard to get rid of him. It's kind of like uh, the the issue with Shadow of War, right? Where one of the DLCs focused entirely on a story revolving around Talion. Yet it was kind of weird that Calibrimbor, the character who you're kind of bound with throughout the entire thing, says nothing. Despite the fact it is very much like the Cyberpunk issue right now, where they're, he's literally possessing your body, so he's seeing and hearing everything. Yet he chooses throughout this entire, like, hour, two-hour DLC mission from Shadow of War... And says nothing. <laughs> Have no words to say. Honestly, he doesn't appear, doesn't say anything, and it's like, really? Really? And the literally thing literally ends later on with, he will return. And the next DLC after that was like a prequel relating to all about his life, but still. Hmm. So it does kind of make sense that they bring Silverhand back for this. You even hear, and I hear him in the end of the trailer, where after you finish the kind of Oath of Allegiance... He kind of chimes in and goes, that oath you took, bad idea. But, um, so yeah, it makes sense that he would come back for this. There you go. So that's also something to talk about. But also, back on the topic of cross-promotion, which is what I was really trying to get into, is that, if you like I said, if you remember early Bond, I should probably talk slower. I feel like I'm talking fast. Is it just you're, me or am you're I You're fine. Fast? You're, you're fine. You're just worried because... You, you have a class later. <laughs> I, that's the thing. I'm not worried. I feel like I'm just naturally talking fast. Am I talking fast? You're fine. You're fine. Just go. <laughs> I'll slow it down if I have to. Right. You know, if I if I talk too fast, I even in casual conversation, like, hold up, slow down. You're talking too fast. I can't understand you. I just do hold up. So <laughs> hold on. I can't hear you. Understanding um, comprehension is not evaluation. Honestly, you're going to have to slow this video down to like 0.1 speed and then I'll actually have complicit conversation. Just honestly, you're going to have to slow it down to like 1% such speed. Such that you won't understand. Honestly, you have to slow it down to like 1% speed for it to actually become like logical English and not just words being shouted at you. Oh, I have to keep reminding myself to do that. Okay, so, my bad. I'll slow it down. Oh, my eyes. Uh, strain. But, um, so yeah, slowing it back down, circling back around. Uh, to recap, if you don't remember early on Cyberpunk's life, they were doing a lot of cross-promotion, cross-stuff like that, and, you know, the game was really hyped up and stuff like that. Maybe in one of its downfalls, but we'll touch on that later. And one of the things they announced they were going to do is an anime. And they were going to have an anime that didn't tie into the mo to the game, but it was going to... It's, it's kind of weird. It's an anime that takes place in the same world, same universe, same da-da-da-da-da, but takes place parallel to the story. So it's not, you know, existing at the... It exists at the same time as everything happening in 2077, the game that is, but you aren't going to run into any of the characters in the game. However... Funny enough, after the mo recently a uh, new trailer came out at the beginning of the presentation for this, you know, Phantom Liberty and all that stuff, they actually showed a really cool um, cross by cross trailer of, you know, sections of the game that'll appear in the anime and vice versa. As well as the fact that later on they reveal that, yes, there won't be meeting any of the characters in the anime in the game but you will be able to come across some of their stuff and even get some special stuff related to the anime, like a uh, specific uh, jacket the main character wears, as well as some special weapons. But, you know, that's interesting. So it's a nice little crossover event. 
Though I, in a way, struggled to say crossover, because they're technically the same thing, just one's the anime and one's the game, so... I don't know, could you use the word crossover here? What do you think? Um... What do you think? Kind of feels like you could, but... Yeah, you know, no, thinking about it, it, it feels in iffy time. in a weird way, like... Yeah. I so know. I kind of struggle to say crossover, because they take place in the same time frame and the same everything outside of... They just don't physically cross over, so... Hmm. Hmm. Eh, it's a little iffy. Yeah. But on the topic of the anime, going back to round, uh, one of the trailers is actually an NSFW trailer. We linked down below. We pointed that out specifically. I'm saying it's NSFW here, so if you're at work or somewhere public, you might not want to show this. Yeah. So, in other, other words, in it, it's an it, it, it's a Netflix show thing, uh, trailer that is for clearly adults or older individuals. Indeed. So. So. Warning. So <laughs> warning. Warning. Deet, deet, deet. <laughs> All right, there you go. This is your obligatory. You, you have been warned. Do not get You've upset with warned. us because we have just Dude. warned you multiple times now. <laughs> If you're in front of your grandparents, or your parents, or someone you... Run you know, away! You know, <laughs> turn around, go to the washroom, go to the back room, go somewhere, anywhere, not around other people. Unless they are also people like you. In that case, eh, your, your problem, not mine. <laughs> but yeah, the trailer, the they announced early on, back in the early days of Cyberpunk, that they were going to do this, and it's finally beginning to actually happen. I think they revealed in the trailer, if you look in the description, it's September 18th this is happening. And this is from the same studio that did Kill a Kill. If you don't know about that, it's an old, that's an well, oldish anime. It was around, I was in high school around 2016, 2018, somewhere around there. 2016, 2015, somewhere around there. I have to check again. Maybe I'm a bit off, but it was a quite a big, it was quite a good anime for the time. I've generally seen it. Oh, I've seen basically a lot of clips, but I've never seen the full yeah. show. But I've seen enough clips of it to know basically everything. So you understand yeah, they it do, enough. Yeah, pretty much. They do very good work. The animation is nice. very good. It honestly looks very good. Funny enough, while I was scrolling on YouTube, just before the, we did this show, I actually saw someone in like one of the videos comparing the the look of this anime. And they say, and a lot of people are saying this anime looks really good, and it honestly does. And someone was like, this is Kill a Kill and Darling and the Franks, like stuck together. And honestly, yeah, those are two very good looking shows. So I can see why people say that. What's weird about this show that I want to specifically point out is not the fact that it's Netflix. Netflix does a few animes every now and then. It's the fact that it's 10 episodes. Why is that strange? Well, if you know the anime industry, you know generally 12 is kind of a baseline. Sometimes 13, and maybe a part 2 of the 13 or more, depending. But to see 12, or not 12, uh, 10 episodes in all that they've said is a very weird number. I just thought that was worth pointing out because it is strange. Like I said, 12 is generally the baseline for animes. A little unorthodox. It is a little unorthodox. Well, I would say more than a little even, but... So that kind of caught me by surprise. But who knows, maybe those would be a very good 10. Mm. Maybe it's just because the quality is so good they couldn't fit the 10 into the, bu the 12 into the budget. Yeah, you never know. After all, it is Netflix we're dealing with here. <laughs> Maybe the tight budget of Netflix, they were like, mm, we can only do tw we can only do ten. We can only do so much. <laughs> we can only do so much. But um, so yeah, that's happening. So all in all, an interesting bit. Like I said, the anime looks really good from what I've seen. Ten episodes, a little weird, but whatever. Actually, a lot weird, but whatever. And when this happens, there's going to be a big up. Uh, big update, I think, already actually in this... Yeah, no, I think the update's already live, well, 1.6, which introduces transmog or to the game, as well as a few other bits and bobs, as well as new gigs and weapons. So that's really good. But yeah, you can cross over, and, you know, if you look around the game world, you can actually come across, you know, special items and special clothing and weapons, I think, weapons as well. From the characters of the show, I know they've touted you can get the main character's jacket in-game, so that'll be interesting. There you go. Which, again, makes sense because... It's always good to see collectibles in a game for, for people. And if you want to wear the jacket around, you know, as another bit of clothing. I wonder what stats it'll have, actually. Hmm. 
his clothing has stats. So I wonder what stats it'll have. You know, maybe. Something. But that's always interesting to see. Makes sense, like I said, because technically the game and anime take place on the exact same time as each other. You just don't see them because they're into uh, kind of like the thing of like two people in a city, but they just don't meet because circumstance. Yeah. But yeah, that's why I struggle to call it a crossover because technically it's happening at the same time in the same place. So. Well done. Eh, it's a little iffy. Regardless. Impressive. The other bit I want to talk about for all of this is where I think Cyberpunk is now. This brings us, you know, massive info drop that I just gave you aside. If you're drowning in the information I've given you, because in Frank, I admit it's a lot, and I was a lot, or not a lot. I should say I was rather quick in expositing it all to you, so you're probably sitting there going, What, what is going on? <laughs> what is going on? I am confusion. Honestly, I am confusion. Honestly, I have to run this sh like this episode well, back like six times to understand half of what I've said. <laughs> oh well, at least it helps for the runtime of the show, yeah. well done. and my efforts to cut down on show length. But regardless, another thing I want to talk about, which I think will take a little bit more time, is the question of where we think the show is now, or not the show, where the um, game is now. There's one particular video we linked in the description, and I had Justin put an addendum on the side saying worth watching. And that is because... Okay, before I say anything about that, actually, I'm going to have to say that I liked Cyberpunk. I liked it at the beginning. I liked it now. Personally, I think the game, while yes, was a buggy as all heck during launch... I myself only ever ran into maybe one bug, which caused a vehicle to literally drive in the air, which made me feel very, <laughs> gave me a very big Back to the Future feel for a second while I was literally driving a car above the ground. I was, I was going to say, I, I was going to be like Back to the Future, Space Odyssey type thing. Honestly, I the car spawned in, right? And you're like, yeah, there's this one, I still remember it so well. It's a side mission where you have to take a guy and you have to take him to a car. I mm. won't expose it as to why to spoil the, you know, surprise, because it's actually quite a nice mission. But you take him to the car, right? And I'm like, okay, where's the car? And I look up, and it's just hovering in the air <laughs> in the spot where it's supposed to be. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's great. Somehow ah. I was able to get the guy in the trunk, which you were supposed to, and I managed to get in the car. And the thing kept its height, even while you were driving up the hill nearby, off the ground. So it just felt like I was driving a hover car for a while. <laughs> there you go. But, uh, yeah, that was the only real bug I ran into, that I'm aware of, at least, that I remember. I mean, you probably ran same... into smaller ones, but not That's... nothing of note, so you don't really remember it. Yeah, no, nothing of real note. So, and granted, I was playing on a PS5 at the time, still do. So that might have had a factor to play in it. Hmm. But personally, I think the kind of, it is bad, 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 was a bit overblown. Actually, a lot overblown, I'll, I'll be honest. Don't get me wrong, there is a lot of valid criticism leveled at this game, especially towards the, shall we say, executive team that managed the game. Expectations were not managed... You know, things got a lot overblown. It's, so by the it's end one of it, those notes that it's just... Companies kind of need to chill out with hyping their games nice. sometimes. Because all it takes is for them to hype it just enough, and people will have way too high expectations. And that kind of leads me... In, yeah, that's actually a nice point. That leads me to the video we linked down below, well the one that has the addendum worth watching. Now, this guy is a, another person who covers things around Cyberpunk as well. And he did a little bit of an expose. And his one before that, which led me into this, was the massive conspiracy theory videos he does about certain games, where it's like the fun conspiracy theories in the game. Sometimes they have to do with, you know, in-game Easter eggs. Sometimes they have to do with, you know, just people having fun, like... Impressive. One of them is in the beginning, you know, does the boss notice you when you actually see him looking at you? Well, it might just be something in the game files that literally says the future boss, which he counts as, has to see people at all times, right? So that's why he notices you. It's kind of a little tech thing, but kind of opens the door to weird conspiracies, that kind of thing. But 
he did a video after the fact about cyberpunk uh specifically about the whole you know amount of criticism it got and stuff like that and and some things honestly some of the criticism labeled at the game were straight up wrong in a way like he says for example um one of the factors about like how every how there will be like thousands of npcs with individual routines and stuff like that well that had to do with actually a mistranslation from an article that the developers did with a i can't remember the name of the team but basically it was an article that they did it was locked behind a paywall and it was in german so there's those two things yep one person managed to get into the article make a massive translation Impressive. And just post it on forum stuff like that. It blew up. Major publications started getting it. The problem lie in, however, that there was actually quite a few mistranslations throughout the um, throughout the article that he made. Unfortunately, major news sites well picked up on this stuff and didn't realize the mistranslations and started basically reporting on the essentially fake news. Mm. I hate to use that term, but there's no real better way of putting it, honestly. And so some of the kind of, like I said, expectations, one of them was, you know, there will be thousands of NPCs with their own individual routines. That was a part of a mistranslation, but that kind of got filtered in. And one is one of the major criticisms or one of the criticisms directed at Cyberpunk in the aftermath of its release. Like, oh, there weren't thousands of da 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 da, despite the fact that after the fact, you know, there were developers and people coming on being like, no, that's a mistranslation. That's not real. And even points out in the video that there are, there was at one point when it comes to stuff like this, literally the developers coming into the thing being like, that's not right, that's a mistranslation. And yet you have some people who are arguing back at the developers about what they themselves what are saying. What their intentions so, are. Honestly. People so... arguing with the developer's developer intention. Yeah, no, it's like... So, you know, in all in all, it's one massive piece of, like, Cyberpunk didn't get as bad isn't as bad as people roll it out to be. Don't get me wrong. And he even says this himself a lot of times. There's a lot of valid criticism labeled at the game. The hype was managed way too poorly. The executive team pushed it out the door way too soon just to make a few bad, just to make a few quick bucks, which ended up really backfiring when you think about it, considering the stock tanking and their own... Anyways. Yeah. Didn't end well. Really backfired. <laughs> Um, but yeah, on and all, I think the game had a lot more bad rap than it deserved. And honestly, I recommend people check out the article, or not the article, the video, link down below. Again, the one that says the worth watching addendum beside it, because it is worth watching. It's a different con opinion on Cyberpunk. He honestly says that a lot of people probably parrot the idea of it's a bad game, not because they themselves have sometimes played it, and even if they have... Some of the things they might be parroting might be straight up incorrect or based on, like in the case of the previous mentioned example, mistranslated information that just got picked up and basically shot throughout the system of the news industry that covers gaming, and everyone just kind of took that as, you know, fact. Despite the fact that on some cases, the developers literally came out literally after the fact, shortly after all things went big, and were like, no, no, that's not true, but by that point, too many people had heard about it well for it to get discredited, right, so... Yep. You know, it's it's a question of this game probably got a lot more bad rap than it deserved. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of valid criticism, like I said, but maybe, actually, I'm going to say a good chunk of it probably isn't. Do yeah. I think this game is I mean, that's, playing that's now? the thing, yeah. real quick, side note about it, is the fact mm. that when people start hype, like, riping on a game and, and saying that it's bad, it's in a way sometimes too late because people feed off of one another and it's like yeah no it is bad it, 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 i had this experience and then ev a lot of people will, will jump on there saying yeah i had that experience too but they probably didn't like it, it's a weird interesting thing to to see that like a lot of people once when s something negative starts it just continues to build and fester from there Honestly, it's it's a nice point because literally while I was looking at the GameSpot comment section of the presentation, which again is linked in the description for the full presentation, including the whole bit where Keanu Reeves hypes up the next expansion, because mm -hmm. why not? 
Um, you look at the comment section, and yeah, it's honestly exactly what we talked about. Everyone just railing on the game. Oh, it's a bad game. Da 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 da. Name it, and it's a criticism that you'll find in the comment section. And I'm sure at this point it's only gotten worse because the video is fairly new. So, not all the comments have rolled in yet, shall we say? When you look at the comment section of the other guy's video, for example, it's night and day. So you know. Yeah. It really is the kind of concept of, you know, it's an echo chamber in the news industry, especially in the gaming news industry, so. Mm -hmm. Honestly, would I recommend playing Cyberpunk? I would recommend at least trying it. It's a very good game. There you go. Though, addendum, like I said, I would aim towards PC or the newer gen consoles. I will say that much. The game is in a much better state now than it was at launch, so. Well done. And like I said, when I played it during launch on the first, you know, on the newer gen consoles, even though it was basically the PS4 Pro version I was playing and not the actual PS5 because they hadn't made the PS5 or next gen versions at that point. Like previously mentioned in the show, the only really bug that I saw that was worth noting was the fact that, you know, a car spawned in literally all Back to the Future style above the floor. So, yeah, but at the end that of the was day, interesting. that's... That, that's something that's kind of going to run into every once in a while. You're, you're going to run into the weird, interesting bug where it's just, oh, wow, that's a that's a one in a chance type of thing. You don't, you don't normally see that every day. Mm. So, yeah, no, honestly, that was the only really major bug that I encountered to my, remem to my knowledge well, that I remember. And a lot of those have been patched and fixed now. The economy has been tweaked, yada, yada, yada. Honestly, it's a much better game now than it was at launch, especially on PC and the newer gen consoles. Hmm. So I would at least recommend trying it. It's a very good game. There you go. But yeah, there you go. That's Cyberpunk news. Yeah. Like I said, haven't covered this in a while. I didn't expect new Cyberpunk news to come out. I was literally logging out of my PS5 yesterday when I was playing Destiny, and I looked on the news feeds, and it was like there it was new Cyberpunk teaser wow. trailer for the new, you know, new Liberty expansion or the uh, freaking Phantom Liberty, and I'm like, oh, cool, a new DLC. Interesting. Interesting. I'm like, I have my show because, you know. True story. I actually did not know what I was going to cover <laughs> for, this e for this week's show literally yesterday. So I'm like, hmm, what am I going to... Oh, that'll work. <laughs> POV when you have no news to cover. All right. Entertainment it is. <laughs> Entertainment it is, then, honestly. <laughs> Random and... bullshit, go. And I just saw an official gameplay trailer... From Warframe Veilbreaker, literally before the show, on my phone, and is now available on that platform, so maybe next week we'll cover that, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> it depends. You never depends. know. So if there's anything big that comes up, we might cover that, but we'll yeah. use this. Well, I mean, that's, that's the thing. It's kind of in a lull. Nothing particularly happens around yeah. September to October. Nothing big, mm. normally. Once when November and December roll in, that's when a lot's going to probably start to kick up again. I'd, I'd be willing to bet people are going to start going crazy once when once when Christmas starts to roll in a little. I mean, unless yeah, anyone well, has, like, any big... Yeah, games have been posted back to anyway. Yeah. Like, unless anyone has any big Halloween event kind of thing that they, go, uh, they got going on, I don't particularly think anything big's going to be happening, at least for the next little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so, That's a fair bit. So yeah, Plus don't it's... don't don't worry everyone. We'll probably have we'll something f eventually. Yeah, we'll do what we can. We always do. Yep. Yep, don't worry. Oh. Before I check out, probably should mention there is some debate on if this is the final DLC or not, though. I don't honestly know. Maybe, maybe not. For Cyberpunk that is. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't know. They said they'd have multiple DLCs figured out, but that may have changed, so who knows? Like I said, there's quite a bit of misinformation that goes around with Cyberpunk, as previously stated. That's kind of the whole reason, in a way, why it got so bad reviews. So, well done. who knows? Maybe there will be more, maybe there won't be. Though, like I said, since they said they're going to primarily, at this point, be focusing on current-gen consoles, as well as PC. 
and keeping only maintenance updates for the older gen, I imagine there's a good chance. I mean, they did say they stick with us in the long haul, so... We'll, we'll have to s stick around and see type of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's it, it's good to see. Like well, Cyberpunk's getting itself a, a DLC. You're getting a whole bunch of stories, so anyone who's, who's interested in campaign and story-based content, well, well, there you go. And honestly, yeah. anyone Very who, good story. Anyone who hopefully enjoys external media, a.k.a. shows and stuff about video games, well, good luck. Or, good luck to you. Or is just a full-on weeb like me and enjoys e anime. Either, either way, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say good luck, because it hasn't been going well. What do you mean it hasn't been going well? Mm. What's this you speak of? Elaborate, the man. TV show and, and movie adaptations don't of the game. Don't you dare bring stuff. up Halo in this. I, don't, I you... don't need to just bring up Halo. Like, take, um... Oh, God, what was that one one series? Like, the one series that started from a book and the TV show... There's was a lot getting... of those. <laughs> I know, but it, it, uh, when the TV show was coming out, it, they were getting help from the author on, like... Uh... Oh, you mean Game of Thrones? No, not Game of Thrones. Um, The Hunter. Like that, that the hunter. I don't know. It's like it's like the Game of Thrones in a way, but you got like a hunter dude. I don't know. I I don't know that series. I don't. Hunger I don't... Games. No. I said it's like Game of Thrones in in that era. I think that kind of era. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. There's a lot of those. Well, never mind. Different yeah. conversation for a different. Video. Either way, like it's not yes. often like. The Assassin's Creed movie, for example, good yeah. on its own, but because of the good fact that good for a fan, the... but not for a random watcher. Yeah, like it, it. Well, it's kind of okay for a fan. Like, for the most part, the whole thing was just super condensed, and a lot of it gets missed out. Like, that's true. It's, it's just a lot of the time, people who make adaptations for a movie or or, or a TV show don't. Either A, don't take the proper time to go deep into the story and everything that they're trying to get into, or B, be throw reasons. most of it out the window. Again, also for probably several reasons. Yes. I mean, I recently learned that the guys who did the Halo TV show have not even ever touched the games, which... No. That's like the cardinal they sin of an adaptation. They, they both, A, never touched any of the games, B, never touched any of the books, of and C, didn't bother to talk to anyone who does do any lore or story or game or anything. They just I did mean, everything even... on their own. I, what, that's like the cardinal sin of adaptations. Why would you ever make like, an adaptation of they, something without ever looking at the source material? Like some yeah, of the things in the very show, like some of the most basic Lord things, like weapons and armor, at times go from lore accurate to completely inaccurate. So it's like, what is it going to be? Are you going to be follow the story, or are you not going to follow the story? I mean, hell, even Peter Jackson consulted with a bunch of Lord of the Rings fans, stuff like that, for the Lord of the Rings series, and hell, even. Uh, Stephen Colbert, a legendary talk show host and legendary fan of the Lord of the Rings series, was consulted on extensively through the Hobbit movies and even made a cameo, actually. And, and those ones do well. Like, when, when you actually go to the source material and try to go... Like, if you're trying to go and do your own story, like, take the Halo so series for a quick second. If they wanted right. to do their own own story and have their own characters like they did, why not just yeah. take Master Chief out? You don't have to have Master Chief in the in the Halo series. You could have taken him out, go and change things up a bit, kind of do something like Halo Reach style where you just bring in a whole bunch of new people and it does well. Like you just have to right focus on your new characters, not an old character and try to try to work around that. Cuz a lot of the time when you try to make your own story, but you try to bring in an existing story, you either fail at it because you don't try to link the old story to the new story. Or you just butcher the old story in the process because, once again, you're ignoring the old story. Nice. Well, again, in the case of most adaptations where it's like, take Lord of the Rings and, like I said, future Hobbit. Mm -hmm. Or not uh, Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones. They're both adapted from books, right? Yes. So even then, you kind of have a base to work off of as is. Whereas the Halo, yeah, you've got a base to work off with, but you can. You have a springboard to do a lot more in that. Yes, and that's the other thing, like... 
I'm going to go back to the point. You didn't have to do Master Chief. There are so many avenues in the Halo series that you can you springboard. Random Spartan. No, like, there weren't a no, thousand like, of them. The Forerunners alone. There's so much. Like, the Forerunners and Ancient Humanity Show alone. In this Forerunner that would be interesting. But yeah, no. Like, think yeah. about that for a quick second. Yeah, there was CG a, nightmare, like, but still. <laughs> during, in the Halo series, in the far past timeline, there was once an Ancient Humanity. They you literally can do an entire series off of that, like ancient humanity no running away from the flood and and the beginning of of like the Halo series. Like you could do stuff that like would that. Be like a CG and FX nightmare. Though. It, it would <laughs> it, it would kind of be. I mean, unless whoever's making it is kind of willing to do Star Wars style, where you go back and, like, and forth between. Department. Oh God. Yeah, like. It, it, it makes it a little easier when you you have like an, an actual actor and then you just add less CG effects overall. Nice. You just have to tone tone things up a little here and there. Like it's not as I mean, much the of a nightmare, but it's alone still be for a anyone who'd be playing a forerunner, considering they look human but not really. <laughs> they're ba- the yeah, face. they're basically so... human. Just think kind of orc like like. Honestly, like they elf, got no notes. Elf and orc human hybrid type thing. Take, yeah, like take an elf, get rid of the pointy ears and the nose. It's basically it. Yeah. Same fair skin tone, technically. Mm. But, uh, but anyways, yeah. we're getting off topic and we're stretching the runtime here, so that's kind of the thing I'm avoiding or hoping to avoid. So well, we're, we'll call we're, it. Here. We were still slightly short at the time, but you know. But yeah, no, there, there's that. Like, I'll, I'll say this. Hopefully the show does well, because every time I see an adaptation that, that branches off from media, I always hope it goes well, because if it goes well, then it means more more people doing it type of thing. It, like, yeah. more people will, will make new at avenues for their story and, and adaptations. Nice. So. Yeah, that kind of goes back to the TV show for Cyberpunk, right? Like, they consulted the source material, and CD is working with them, and CD is working with the author who made Cyberpunk originally for the games and stuff like that, so... You know, we'll, we'll, I'm we'll gonna say it, it goes. but we'll have to see. It's kind of hard to fuck up. So. It, it is, but <laughs> there's still a percentage chance. It has been done chance. before anyway. <laughs> All it takes is one little miscalculation or or one story change, and it's like ah, yay, everything's out the window. <laughs> That's the thing with anime, and that's the nice thing about animes and stuff in a night way. Even if the story turns into complete garbage, you can at least look at it in in most cases and be like, ah, pretty colors. <laughs> Whereas yeah. in live action, you're like, eh, the story sucks. I guess the FX were good, but that's about it, really. <laughs> like, you have nothing big to distract from it. In anime, you can be like, oh, the music's really nice. And you kind of say that in movies, too. And in anime especially, you can be like, ooh, pretty colors and visual effects. Whereas in movies, I guess you can say that, but let's be honest. If you have a bad story, the movie is going to be regardless. So there you we will go. see. There you go. Well, hopefully you all enjoyed. And hopefully you all enjoyed. Anyone who is interested in cyberpunk news, you've got some cyberpunk-related content and external content to look forward to so you know there you go yep you can bet your arse i'll be watching that anime i have netflix and i'll be making use of it this time i'll be doing something with it. i watch netflix for a lot of things like i watch the witcher series i've watched the first i've watched the two seasons they're good there you go there you go all right well anyways we will see you all in the next one yep see you all next week bye no. <laughs> see bye <laughs> see you all See you all next week. Goodbye.